This is just a quick demonstration on how I trim a Cocker Spaniel head. Everybody does it a little bit differently, and please keep in mind that my trim is not for competition grooming, but for show grooming. And actually, this dog is never going to be shown because of her cleft lip, so it's more just for pet grooming. Okay? So I always do my clipper work. I use wall barettos, and I always have the clipper blade on the middle setting there. Okay? I know for competition grooming, they do different blade lengths in different areas and cut with the grain and against the grain. I don't do any of that, mostly because I don't have time to groom my dogs every week when I use all those different blade lengths. So I always start with the ear, and the key to trimming the, the ear is to trim down below where the ear flap curves, so you can see the line should be about there on this dog, okay? Because there's the curve and there it is. Her owner has been letting it grow out a little bit, so I'm gonna take it back down. I know, Zoe, I haven't groomed you in a while. Stop. Okay. And I clip against the grain on the ears, not with the grain. And when I'm coming up to the top, I clip all the way up to there. So you can see it looks to be a little bit past where the ear actually joins the skull. You don't want to leave hair there and create a ridge or wings. Okay. Some groomers use scissors to trim the fronts of the ears. I use clippers. Zoe, bear with her. There's dogs running all over my house. So, paying attention is not easy. And I clean out everywhere. I hold the ear up. Because of the ear issues that this breed can have, I always spend a lot of time cleaning out around the ear. And the other trick is to make a V in the ear hair. I don't know how much you can see that because it makes the ear appear longer. And particularly in a puppy that doesn't have a ton of ear hair, it, it just gives it a nicer finish. Zoe. I match how much I shave on the inside of the ear to what I do on the outside. When in doubt, Personally, I take more off the inside. This little girl's got itchy ears. They're not happy. So you want as much air to come through as possible. And I sort of trim, I know, girly, from all angles to get all the little random hairs that grow out at various angles. Okay. So then, I want to trim, this camera's not at the best angle, this hair up to the corner of the eye, okay? The owner will probably yell at me, but I'm going to take the eyelashes off because I don't believe they're good. I believe they attract debris into the eyes. Her owner can grow them out if she wants. You should roughly have a line from the corner of the eye to the top of the ear, okay? Then, you want to start the bib coat roughly two fingers above her prosternum. So, it should start right about here. And again, I do everything against the grain because quite frankly, I'd like it to last. Okay. A lot of groomers will do a V above the prosternum. I do more of a W. I do a little V on either side of it. That causes this bib hair to puff out a little bit and helps 
give that appearance of lots of front. Now this bitch has a fine front. There's nothing wrong with it. But you could see if it poofs out a little bit and then comes in here, it just looks chestier. On the back of the neck, I know, Zoe, I trim from the corner of the ear down to the shoulder. Then on the face, stop. I know. I trim from the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth, against the grain. Stop. I know. Her mother clearly does not groom her the same way that I do. And her ears are itchy. Yeah, give your ears a touch. Stop. Okay. I know it's itchy. Stop, Zoe. Stop. You really want to clean up well under the chin to give you that nice appearance. And I always stretch out the lip and make sure I get in those lip folds because if you don't, they can get a lip fold infection and it stinks and it hurts them and it's completely avoidable. If the dog has really deep lip folds, I will go down to the shortest blade setting. Hers are pretty reasonable and they don't look gross, so I can do my usual setting, okay? Stop. I leave my blade length the same. Stop it, Zoe. But for this portion of the muzzle, I hold the clippers somewhere around a 45 to 60 degree angle. This is the only place where I don't cut super tight. You need to do this particularly on dogs that need a little bit more muzzle to balance out the top skull. It leaves the hair slightly plusher and gives them more balance. You always clean out the stop, this area right here, and I clean out across the top of the nose and in the corner of the eye with my clipper, okay? Now you don't want it to be obvious that she's got stop zone all this longer hair so you have to kind of work it with the clippers a bit and you can see i gouged her there so unfortunately that's just gonna have to wait to grow out if i was showing her i might chalk that spot just to give it a little bit more volume but because she's just going home on Sunday to her other owner, I don't need to do that. So that's what you get then. All right, I'm gonna put this on pause and do the other side of her head. So now that the other side of her face is done, I'm just gonna show you what I do with the top skull. I clip with the clippers. I don't know if it's an inch, or what the actual measurement is. I try to do it from the line of the skull just up a little bit. I know that's not a great descriptor, but unfortunately that's all I've got, okay? You wanna leave what's here because cockers are supposed to have an arch of neck and you have a nicer arch if you leave some hair here and then clean that off.
seems like I'm wasting time, but I like to keep this area clean. So my clipper work is done. Now I need my thinning shears and possibly my razor, okay? Um, for the top knot, so what you should see when you look at the cocker is that this part of the skull equals this part of the muzzle, okay? So you could see she's a little bit narrow through here. Any hair you leave on through here, okay, is gonna add width up here. So I'm gonna show you the method. Oh, this is really hard to do, but I'll try it this way. The method that I learned from the top cocker handler in the States is what I used to call the Donald Trump, but I hate to do that now. I brush all of the top knot hair over to one side. I hold the ears only because I don't want to cut the ear leather by accident. And then you take your thinning shears and you clean out anything that sticks out over the side. Okay? Now, if your shears are really sharp or you're new to this, I definitely would cut less and brush more um, just because it will save you from taking too much off. So then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. and then brush it back and you can see that it cleans up anything that was on the sides of our skull there. The other thing you could do is they really should have nice well-defined eyebrows. You can just ever so gently thin against the grain of the hair growth on the eyebrows to ensure that they're well-defined. It gives them a bit of a softer look. Obviously you want to be really careful here and you want to have a dog you can trust not to jerk its head away at that moment. But you get, stop, so a much prettier head shape when you do that. You know, you can see it blends a little bit better and is soft. At the neck, I do not thin any of the stuff that I cut the line on, but I will thin this to try to blend it. Obviously you can see that she's two different colors, so you know blending is a bit of a challenge because the darker back coat is never gonna fully blend into that almost white side coat. But you can at least get rid of this super harsh line by using your thinning shears. And if you have a razor, I will often razor this area as well. So even with just my rough thinning, which is super duper rough by the way, you can see that the line has been blended a bit more and doesn't look like I literally just took the clippers to it. As much as we sculpt to these dogs, they should look natural. So you really want to avoid blunt lines wherever you can. Okay. And then I would go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Just blend that in. You can see there's a fairly definite line there. I always do a better job blending the off show side because for whatever reason it is less Yeah, I know. She is not living the dream here. So already, 
I mean, the, the color line is there. You can't get rid of that. But the clipper line is certainly decreased. So there you have her head. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And um, I would do this four or five days before the show for, for a confirmation show and then it'll grow in a little bit and I'll be able to do any touch-ups when we get ready to show. So I hope you find that helpful and feel free to ask me any questions if you have any.